Well, it looks like 343 may have done the impossible in more ways than one. Now, first up, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and share. It really helps the channel out. So 343 came out today and showed a lot of Halo Infinite campaign footage. And it's a visual upgrade across the board. Graphical detail, resolution, performance, all of it looks better. I didn't notice any pop in whatsoever while watching this. Now we're going to do some quick comparisons because the upgrade is pretty big. So last year we saw Master Chief looking out of a pelican in a halo ring. Now off in the distance there's not much detail but now you can make out individual power pylons off in the distance something they didn't even have to do. Next up the secondary character. You can see they used depth of field to hide low resolution textures on some of the objects. Now, full on 3D renders up close and it looks fantastic. Next up, character models across the board, fantastic. Last year, they looked like this and now they look like this. Honestly, just a huge upgrade across the board in general. Now 343 have gone above and beyond, making this game a whole lot better. And the thing is, they've done more than people realise. You see, they had to go into this game and not only make something that would satisfy the crowd that just want traditional Halo over and over and over again. They also had to satisfy people like me who like to play a new Halo game with new things in it and new things to do, new setting, new enemies and all that stuff. And it's almost as if they've made a Halo that satisfies both audiences which is a huge task if you really think about it when it comes to art design and gameplay satisfying two audiences that can't be the easy task but they somehow did it now halo has always been about the open sandbox experience it always has been now if you really think about it halo in the past has provided you with weapons and vehicles and that's pretty much it but in this game within combination of the grapple shot and being able to pick up certain items such as power cores and then throw them you pretty much have unlimited possibilities being able to call in new vehicles via the pelican is just a new thing which is really cool for the franchise so it looks like they've created these open environments filled with not only things to do but things that matter objectives that matter to the story because the banished have taken over the halo ring and you need a reason to go around and to stop them every single time you see them and honestly the game looks interesting halo has always been one of the peaks of sci-fi video game storytelling in 343 it looks like they're knocking it out of the park honestly when it comes to vehicles tone everything it looks like they've just done a fantastic job now any fan of halo knows that gameplay is key it always is now if you've played the multiplayer in the tech test you'll know it plays really good really good frankly it's possibly the best halo gameplay to date and with gameplay they still satisfying multiple audiences which is very important now halo has always had a very light-hearted sense of humor so even though the game is serious a lot of the time they will do some funky stuff sometimes that will make you chuckle sometimes like driving off a cliff Honestly, I'm happy with what they've shown. 343, they've had a year to make this game not only something that looks great on next generation consoles, it has to be a Halo game that fans want to play for years to come. Because you have to think about it like this. People play Halo campaigns over and over and over and this is the biggest Halo campaign to date. Which is a big thing. So even though you have these open sections which provide you multiple different ways to finish objectives, much like a open world Far Cry game, it's given players reason to go back and play again because you're going to be able to finish objectives different ways in different playthroughs, which is absolutely massive for the franchise. Now with Halo Infinite providing the biggest open world sandbox experience to date, options are key and one of the things they're doing is a skill tree now a skill tree actually makes a lot of sense especially when you have these armor abilities via gadgets that you can upgrade when you want and the thing is if you want to play through the majority of halo infinite mainly using the grapple shot 
you're going to be able to max out that thing as much as you want. And in the trailer, they actually showed it electrified. So you're going to be able to use that to damage enemies in combination with other weapons. So they're providing just a wide range of not only options to the player to go through these games, but it's just making the game more replayable. Because again, people play Halo campaigns over and over and over. And this is meant to be lasting 10 years or whatever. But it looks like these upgrades and the skill tree is just going to make the game better in the long term and frankly as a halo fan as someone that likes open games that provide players multiple different options to finish objectives this is what i want from a halo game like this and it looks like 343 is just going to knock it out the park look i get it last year people were disappointed with how the game looked how it performed in the whole craig situation but as someone that covers gaming i can see 343 have put a ridiculous amount of time and effort into this game. The game is cinematic. The storytelling looks like it's going to be good. There's humour. It looks like they're capturing the sci-fi element of Halo that's been there since day one. It's a modern Halo game for the modern times. So given the current situation with developers working from home, what they've been able to do in the past year is extremely impressive. Now, you have to look at it like this, is that Halo multiplayer, it plays good. It really does. People across the board love Halo Infinite multiplayer. But it also looks good. And when it comes to campaigns, campaigns almost always look better than the multiplayer. And the multiplayer already looked good. So overall, it was good signs pointing towards that. We've seen the campaign now. We've played the multiplayer. Halo Infinite looks like it could be the best Halo game to date. Which is saying a lot, because we've had some pretty good Halo games in the past, if you ask me. So, we have over a month till launch. We still have other things we need to find out about, but all in all, it looks like it's going to be a, a fantastic release. And personally, I can't wait for it. Now, this will be the biggest Halo game to date, because Halo Infinite multiplayer is free. That is a big deal, especially with the current climate for multiplayer. This is going to be going up against things like Fortnite and Warzone and Apex and pretty much everything that's free to play. But the thing about Halo is it's offering a pure multiplayer experience in a free to play world. So the big team battle, the capture the flag, that pure Halo experience that people know and love more modern than ever before, but free. For the masses, people are going to be able to play this on their Xbox consoles, their PCs, their tablets and mobiles. So this could be the biggest Halo multiplayer to date because it's free. Another thing you have to look at is that with the current climate we're in with multiplayer, a lot of it is very similar. But Halo sets itself apart from everything else because Halo has always been extremely unique. It always has been. So on the multiplayer front, it looks great as well. And frankly, as someone that mainly plays single player, I can't wait to jump back into multiplayer because it was so much fun. And let's talk about the campaign again. This will be the first Halo game, the first mainstream main Halo title to launch an Xbox Game Pass. Xbox Game Pass has been growing tremendously over the past few years, getting bigger and bigger every few months. In Halo Infinite, it's going to be one of the biggest titles to date. Day 1, Xbox Game Pass. So, out of the gate, the co-op experience alone is going to be fantastic. Now, Halo has always been an event. It's made the news, there's been midnight launches across the world. I even remember seeing Times Square videos all over YouTube for previous Halo releases and it's like that's how big Halo is. Halo's up there with GTA because it's not just a game release, it's not just another Tuesday or Friday, it's an event. It's an event that everyone talks about and if you look at social media right now, if you look at YouTube, everyone is talking about Halo Infinite, which is a good sign. So it's a great time for Halo fans and Xbox fans alike. Now, 
that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please hit like, share and subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications. I have another podcast coming out tomorrow, All Things Xbox Podcast Episode 3. I have a lot of cool things coming soon. And if you really want to support this channel, please share. It helps the channel out a lot. I have more videos planned for November than the past three months combined. Anyway, a lot of cool stuff coming soon. I'm out. I hope everyone has a good day. Peace.